explain this a little deeper um, that I was putting a message together and, and uh, it just wasn't flowing, you know, and so I quit and went, went to another one. And then uh, Jackie got a shipment in that day and this sign was in it. And uh, so it was like, yes, that's it. And then the very same day, uh, we got a, a letter in the mail and on, the, on it, was, it, was from, it was a prophecy and uh, from a ministry uh, to us and it said on it, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And the prophecy went on and, and explained quite a bit of stuff. It's like, wow, this is it. You know, this, this has to be, be taught. So anyway, that's where we're headed. And how many know that God is able? God is able. You know, it says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Now, it says, now all glory to God who is able. Now, does it say that, it, it doesn't say now all glory to God for you are able. Doesn't say that, does it? It says, he is able through his mighty power at work within you. Within you. He is able to work in you. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but how do I, you know, here's something that really hit me last night. What we're talking about today is our weaknesses, okay? How many has felt weak before? Not in strength, you know, might, but I mean, just like drained. You know, I can't take this anymore. I'm done. It's over. You know, but then there's people that have prospered and they've done well through their life, and that's great. That's good. But how do you tell these people when they're our age? They're grown. They're starting. They're looking at retirement, things like that. How do you tell them that they need God when they've depended upon themselves all this time? Seriously. When they've depended upon self all their life, how do you make them think that they really need a God? Well, they know Jesus. So does the devil. He knows him too. But how do you get them to see that there's more to it? Okay? That's a challenge. Because there, the, I, I know that there's people who's like, well, you know, that's nice, fine and dandy, but... It's by, hard, it's by my hard work and by my, what I've done in life and the choices that I've made that has made our success. So those are hard people to, that's a hard nut to crack, you see. But God is able. And his grace is sufficient. His, his says, my grace is sufficient for you. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says this. And he said to me, this is Paul speaking. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The message says it like this. I love, I love the way this says this. It says, and then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Okay, so God's strength comes into its own. It's not by what you do, nothing you do. It's nothing about that. His strength comes into you on its own through your weakness. Okay, once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. So, when I feel weak, God is strong in me. Okay, now, faith is this. Faith is trusting God even when your feelings don't. Your faith is stronger than your feelings. In other words, your trust is stronger than your feelings. Okay? So, I am weak. I'm not, when I'm weak, I'm not depending upon myself, but I'm depending upon God. Now, it's all I got to do is receive. Well, 
okay, so how do I receive? How do I, how do I receive that? Well, it says here, it says, I quit focusing on the handicap. What's your handicap today? Is it lack? Is it a disease? Is it a sickness? Is it, what, what is your handicap today? What, what, is, what, is, what, is your, what is the problem today? What is that? Okay, so how do I receive it? Well, I quit focusing on that and I begin appreciating the gift. I start to appreciate that gift. The gift of what? The gift of grace. That when, when I am weak, he is strong. You know, we've all been to a point where, man, I, I, I'm, I, I can't handle this no more. And is, is, we've all been there. We've all been to that point where it's like, man, there's just no way. I, I can't figure my way out of this. I'm, I'm stuck. I am totally stuck. I'm in a hole. I don't see any way out. Been there? I don't see any way out. God is saying, now I can work. Now I can work in you. But keep your trust in me. Because at that point, at that point when you're down and you're feeling ick and there's no way out, that's the time that you can give up on God just like that. Because your feelings, you're not seeing any results. What you're seeing is the physical nothingness of what you're trying to achieve. And you say, where is God? I've been praying, I've been doing, I've been trying to do this, I've been trying to do that. And you've been trying, that's it. That's the problem, you see. You've been trying. He says, let me do it. Let me do it for you. So we need, you know, when, we're, when we quit focusing on the handicap and begin appreciating the gift, not by complaining about it, you know, not talking negative about it, you know, like I said before, you know, people come in, they want pray, prayer for healing, but then they go right back out and they say, oh man, I'm sick, oh God. Well, praise God, you got what you call, what you're asked for, you know, you're speaking it, you're speaking it. Have a joyful expectation. How many, how many have had this feeling that you, that you, you can't figure it out, there's no way, it's over, it's done, I'm kaput, I'm, I'm finished here, I can't, do, I can't find my way out of it, but yet deep down inside when you do a check, you have a joyful expectation. You ever been there? Even though you're, you're, you, it's like, I can't figure my way out of it. But you know what? I know that God will come through for me. I know he will. I'm, depend I'm trusting you, Jesus. It says in your word that you, you know, you, you've promised me health. You promised by your stripes I am healed, you know. It says that you, you, you enjoy the prosperity of your people. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you. Even though I can't see it, I know you're at work doing it for me. I give you praise and glory. I praise you for it right now. I receive it, Lord. I receive your abundance in my life. I receive your healing in my life. I receive it, Lord. Not by how I feel, but I just trust in you, knowing that it is about to take place, that it's here, it's mine. So I'm trusting him. You know, and when you fa Here's something else. When you have failed at something, Say you're doing something and you failed at it. Kind of like getting in the ring with Muhammad Ali, okay? Now, Don could probably knock out Muhammad Ali in one punch, you know, but the rest of us, <laughs> maybe today, yeah, he's gone, isn't he? <laughs> no, you know, I don't think he, I think he's still alive. Anyway, but let's, let's just put that as an example. If you went in the, in the, in the ring with Muhammad Ali or, or, or Sugar Ray Leonard and you got the tar beat out of you every time, or Hulk Hogan got thrown off the, <laughs> the top of the ring, you know, you got beat up, would you want to go in there the second time? Not too terribly bad, would you? You don't want to go into a place where you've been beat up before. It's like, uh-uh, I don't want to do that, you know, because I, I just, I, I know the results of this. Now, God does give you common sense, that's true, you know. But if we failed at something, it's not God's will that you fail. But now you are a super candidate for His grace, His blessings through grace. Because you failed at it, you have no, you're not, you're not acting on your strength. When, when Jackie was up here and we, in the, her back went da 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 da, -da remember I asked you guys if you felt anything and you said no? I didn't feel nothing. Why, how did God, why did God work? Because we weren't in it. 
We were totally out of it. When we were totally out of it, bop, 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 it worked. Okay? It just worked. Why? Because I, I was out of it. You guys were out of it. We just prayed by faith. We just trust you, Lord. That's it. It wasn't no super fantastic prayers like, oh, you know, and we were, oh, come out, you know, like, no. It was just a, you know, you ever pray for somebody and you don't know what to pray? It's kind of like, uh, be healed. <laughs> you, know? you know, sometimes, just sometimes a simple prayer like that. God knows your heart. You're out of it. He's in it. Boom, it happens. You know, it's nothing fancy. But because you are weak in that area, you are a super candidate for his blessings through his grace. So don't worry and start speaking negative, even though you're a little gun shy in some of those areas. Now, people, I've heard this. People say this. Well, you know, brother, I realize this grace thing is, you know, it's, it's okay. But, you know, God's got his part. But man has his part too. Really. Man has got to do his part too. God's got his part, but man's got his part. Anybody heard that? I've heard it a lot of times. Huh. But you've got to understand one thing. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis 17.1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God, El Shaddai, all supplying. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Okay, so my God's part and man's part. Well, God's got his part, man's got his part. My part is weakness. My part is weakness. My part is all weakness. It's not, and I, I'm not saying being a puny, you know, a wimp. But I can't do it, Lord. Understanding that I cannot do it. In my strength, I cannot do it. Okay? So my part is all weakness. That's my part. And he says this. He says, I added that. I seen Don looking at his Bible. He says, that's not in my Bible. <laughs> it is. But I added that El Shaddai, all supplying, you know. Because... Almighty God means El Shaddai. El Shaddai means all supplying. All supplying God. He is all supplying. See, Abraham, he went from, he went from, from, uh, how, he went month to month, year to year, trying. Okay? I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Hmm. Nothing's happening. Well, I'm going to go out on my own and make it happen. Okay? That's represent Ishmael's re representative law. Okay? Law. Because he did it in himself. Okay? Isaac is a picture of God's grace. You see? Because God did it. God did it. When he was 90 years old, he, he's at the point where he's going... I can't do this. It's physically impossible. There's, my youth is gone. I can't do it. How can I have a child when I'm dang near 100 years old? That, yeah, right. That's going to happen. Like, that's going to happen. But then God's, God at that point says, now, now that you are completely out of it, and you know you're completely out of it because you are in a place where you can't do a thing about it. You're done. You're dried up, bud. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, but God says, now I can work. Now I am the almighty God. I am the almighty God. El Shaddai, all supplying. And boom, one year from then, he, they had a child, didn't they? So, he says, my, he says, my part, God's part is, I am the Almighty God. That's God's part. So what's your part? What's your part? Who are you? Let's go to the next slide. 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
Say, I'm the righteousness of God through Christ. Through Christ. Proverbs 10.6 says this. Blessings, I had this on Facebook um, this last week. Proverbs 6 says, blessings are on the head of the righteous. Who's righteous? You are. Through Christ. See, blessings are on the head of the righteous. Christ is righteous, right? The blessings are on Him. But you are in Him. I, you are the righteousness of God in Him. So now the, the blessings can flow to you. James 5.16 says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Who's righteous? You are. So, in other words, when you pray, God hears you because you're righteous. Your prayers are being heard. Has anybody felt like your prayers aren't being heard at times? We've felt that before. We've all felt that. Okay? Are they being heard? By what the Word says, are they being heard? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, how do I get those prayers answered? How do I get those prayers answered? By being weak. By knowing, being weak is being, knowing that I can do nothing about it. I am totally dependent upon Christ. I am totally dependent upon Him to, to make it come forth. Totally dependent upon Him. So now, and when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, El Shaddai, all supplying. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now I've heard this. Walk before him and be thou perfect. Oh, you've got to do, you've got to be perfect. Bev, you've got to work at being perfect before the Lord. Really? Come on, seriously? You can't. Christ was perfect. Walk before me. In other words, know who you are. God knows who he is. I am the great I am. Who are you? Well, I am the righteousness of God through Christ. And when I am weak, he is strong. Right? So, I am in him. He is in me. So, when that happens, I am walking before him. I'm walking with him. And I am perfect. You see? I am perfect because of what he's done. I don't have to do anything to be perfect. All I have to do is accept the gift of righteousness. Accept him. Accept that gift makes me perfect. Accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior makes me perfect by his blood. But now I'm accepting that gift of righteousness. So, be thou perfect before the Lord. That about makes me gag when I hear that in the wrong, wrong uh, motive. The, the wrong, it d is delivered wrong. Be thou perfect. God, I've heard that so many times. Don and Becky are laughing. I, I know you. <laughs> They're going, oh, gee. <laughs> be thou perfect. Okay, I'll, I'll try that. I'll see how that works. <laughs> I can't. I can't be perfect. God is the only one that's perfect and I'm in Him. He accepts, accepts me as who I am. Okay? I'm the righteousness of God through Christ. Joel. Joel 3.10 it says, Let the weak say I am strong. Okay? Let your faith, meaning trust in Jesus, be stronger than your feelings. Let the weak say I am strong. So let your faith, your trust in Jesus be stronger than your feelings. Even though you're feeling like, man, this ain't ever going to happen. Let your faith, let your trust be stronger than those feelings that you have. Because those feelings will speak. And when you start speaking, the, the, you speak, you, what you speak is the overflow of your heart. Okay? And when you start to speak those things, those negative things, that's what, you're, that's what your heart desire is delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart okay but now if you're delighting yourself in lack and you're speaking it it's the overflow of your heart 
what are you going to have? Lack. You see, he can only do what you're allowing him to do. So when I start to speak those things, man, I got to watch what I speak and I got to watch who I hang out with. You guys have probably worked construction at some point in time in your life. So when you're around a bunch of construction workers, oh boy, they like to use foul language sometimes. And if you allow it, pretty soon it rubs off on you. And you'll start speaking those, that foul language, you know. So watch who you hang around with. How do they think? How are they thinking? Are they thinking negative? Are they prospering you? Are they, are, are, I don't mean financially, but I mean, are they, are they helping you in your thinking? Are they helping you? Are they promoting you? And how you're, if you're down, do they help you to get picked back up? Or do they just, they slide right into it with you? You know, sometimes misery loves company. We've all been there too, where we just, oh boy, if we can, we'd like to drag somebody right down with us because we, we feel better. <laughs> how does that work you know so watch who you're hanging with maybe you need to change some friends you can still have a friend but you don't have to hang so much time with them you see you can still be their friend but watch watch what happens there so weakness is strength in the almighty God El Shaddai all supplying God the Lord said Moses lift up your rod okay and what happened the water split didn't it Okay, Peter said, Lord, I give you all my sins in, in Acts, and, and 3,000 people were saved. Okay, so Abraham waited month after month, year after year, until he was all weak, unab unable to perform. Then God said, I am the Almighty God. Now I can work. Right believing is not about, right believing is not about believing hard enough or long enough or strong enough. It's about believing on Jesus. That's it. It's not you believing hard enough. Well, I need to. <laughs> okay, I need to. Oh, I gotta. Oh, I gotta believe. I gotta believe. I gotta believe. No, it's just believing, trusting in Jesus. Okay, trusting in Jesus. It takes some practice to do that. To trust on Him. How many is? How many has ever been in a sporting event before? Okay, I was in track. Okay, but you know what? You take time to condition before you go to the track meet you know your grandson he conditions before he goes to a wrestling meet he just doesn't you know one day go well I think I'm gonna go to the wrestling meet he practices he conditions himself okay we need to condition ourselves to trust trust in him trust what God is saying our faith is on Jesus our trust is on him okay uh, th this is interesting John 8:32. John 8 32 it says this it says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free we've all heard that right but think about this who's Jesus talking to here the Jews he's talking to the Jews okay so from the time when, when, a, when a Jewish child is from age 5 to 10 they they learn the first five books of the, of the Bible, okay? The Torah. They learn it. They memorize it, okay? From age five to ten, they memorize the Torah. And then from ten years on, then they learn the oral law, okay? There's a written law, which is the Ten Commandments, and there's an oral law. Now, we're not going to go into that today. We're not, we're not going to start talking about that. But they learn that. And then... Then what happens is they believe that this written and oral law needs to be taught in our churches. And this is what we need in our moral lives. Right? Thou shalt not kill. We need to bring the Ten Commandments back into school. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. Now, people think, well, wait a minute. Why? It's law. Thou shalt do this. Thou shalt do that. It's not the law that makes them right. It's Jesus that makes them right. Learning Jesus. Okay? What is, well, 
we're not under law, are we? Let's go to that one. We're not under law. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So now should we put the Ten Commandments in school? Are we under law or grace? What's the Ten Commandments under? So we need to put the law into the schools, right? No. Not at all. What's Titus 2.11 say? Remember what Titus 2.11 says? The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all people. It educates us so that we can live sensible, ethical, and godly lives right now by rejecting ungodly lives and the desires of this world. What's the desires of this world? The desires of this world is me doing it myself. You see? See, I, I always had a problem with this. Well, the desires of this world means I can't have a boat and I can't have a, a nice car and I've, I've got to be just this poor person in rags that I can't have anything. Well, that's a bunch of malarkey. That's not true. God says, but then you read, well, God wants you to prosper. Well, just spiritually, that's it. Just spiritually. He doesn't want you to have anything. just wants you to spiritually prosper. Well, I can be real happy with nothing. How about you? You know, I just love to have nothing. Boy, it just makes me so happy. just makes me joyful and triumphant. I just leap in the air when I have nothing. When you don't have money to buy a loaf of bread. Oh, praise God, I just love it. Don't you? No, that's not prospering. That's just being phony. That's just being phony, okay? It's grace. What needs to be taught in church is the grace of God, and then that will go into the school. That's what will go into the school, is His grace. Jesus was teaching to people who knew the law in John 8, 32. He was teaching to people who knew the law. But He said, the truth shall set you free. He says, the truth shall set you free. Not the law, not the Torah, not the oral law, not the written law. So why is the law being taught in the, in the churches? It's putting them in bondage. Because it's the truth that will set you free. So, what's, what, so what is the truth? John 1, uh, John 1, 1 through 3, it says this. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Now that's kind of a noodle scratcher sometimes when you read that. So let's go, to the, let's go to another version of that. The New Living says, In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. That's Jesus, right? Okay. God created everything through Him. Through who? Jesus. And nothing was created except through self-works. Oh, no, Jesus. Okay, so I, I, want you to put, I want you to look at something here. Nothing was created except through Him. So everything, God created everything through Him. So how are you going to get what you need from God? Through Him. You're not going to get it anywhere else but through Him. Through your weakness, He is strong. Through your weakness, He is strong. So then I can start to receive, just like when Jackie stood up here. Be healed. That was it. You know, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy schmancy about that. It just worked. Because we were totally out of it. I mean, we weren't out of it you know we were just <laughs> John 1 14 says this it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth full of grace and truth okay John 1 17 says this it says for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ Okay, so grace came. See, law was given, but grace came. Law was given, but grace came. 
Okay? So when grace, grace is the truth that will set you free. Now Jesus was speaking to the Jews when he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay? So they're, they're scratching their noodle here. But, but when, you, when grace is brought forth and is preached, you get attacked. Okay? You get attacked. Not from you because you know you're, 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 you're knowing grace. But you go into a law given church, okay, and start preaching grace, and you'll get run out of town. Okay? Paul got beat. Paul got put in prison. Okay? Because of grace. Why? Why? Because Satan will try to destroy it. Why will Satan try to destroy it? Satan wants the law preached. He does. He wants the law preached because it will not set you free. Think about it. Going into that, they, the people that are bringing forth law, they are totally deceived. Being deceived is this. Truly believing what you say is right. But when it's not right. But you, you are totally deceived. That's what the devil does best. He deceives the elect. He will deceive them. So they cannot see. So they cannot be set free. Making Christ of no effect. Okay? So Satan wants law preached because it will not set you free. It is Satan's will that you be in bondage. Now that may offend and I'm not trying to pick out any one ministry but you know in your minds who's preaching truth and who isn't or who's pre preaching a mixture of both I've heard this well you got to have law but you've got to have grace too no you don't it's alright to know the law but don't live by it don't live by it so Moses was a servant okay the law came through a servant. And Jesus says, a servant doesn't abide in the house forever. Go to, go to John 8. John 8. John 8 says this. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. These are the Jews saying this, okay? Well, we are Abraham's descendants. And never have been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made, that, that you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most surely I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to the message and read that again. It says, Surprised, they said, But we're descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say the truth will free you? Jesus said, I will tell you most assure, uh, solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead-end life and is, in fact, a slave. Okay? A slave. Now, you ever, anybody ever seen Year One, the movie Year One? You've seen it? When, when, <laughs> when O goes, when do you get off? And she goes, never, I'm a slave. <laughs> you know, you know, when do you get time off? Never, I'm a slave. <laughs> okay, that's a hilarious movie. Okay, so choose, in fact, a slave. A slave is a transient who cannot, can't come and go at will. A slave is someone who can't come and go at will. The son, though, has an established position, the run of the house. So if the son sets you free, you are free through and through. Know who you are. Start to understand who you are. You can serve with an attitude of a servant or a son. We serve with a, with a spirit of a son. Okay? And the Father has given us the spirit of his Son by which we cry, Abba, Father. That's in Galatians 4. Galatians 4, 1 through 7. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. 
Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons, not servants, but sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a son or a slave? A, excuse me, a son or a servant? Oh, we serve the almighty God. Well, see, if, if you come in with that attitude, they may, you know, sound holy, righteous, and all that. I oh, serve the almighty God. Well, you're already distancing yourself from him because he's, he's not personal to you. I serve the almighty God. No, I serve my daddy, my dad, Abba Father, Jesus. I love you, man. I love you too, you know? I serve him. It puts it at a personal level instead of an almighty distance God that is up there and I'm down here and I'm just this little worm and I'm trying to stick my head up out of the gopher hole enough to get some favor. I come up on the 2nd of February you know, Groundhog Day, to see if I can get some morsels, and then I go back. No. Not that at all. Romans 5.9. Romans 5.9, it says this, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We'll be saved from wrath through him. Okay, how many, how, I used to think that we'll all be judged someday, right? We've all thought that at one point in time. Will you be judged? Not if you're in Christ. Not if you're in Christ, you will not be judged. Always remember this, judgment is behind you. The judgment came upon Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, if you make him the Lord and your Savior, if you trust in him, you will not be judged don't worry about judgment day. Judgment day will be rejoicing. You'll be rejoicing. You'll be, there'll be rewards handed out, okay? Crowns handed out. That's what's going to happen to us. We ain't going to get judged. We don't have to go before the Father. See, when I was going to Sunday school and all that stuff, I was, it was always taught to me, well, you know, you, you, you love Jesus. Yes, you've got to do this stuff, but there's judgment day. When the Father will judge you what you did and what, what you did, whether right or wrong. And if you did, if you, you know, the, if the scale kind of goes, tips a little bit to the wrong, to hell you go. You know, that's, that's how I, that's what was taught to me. And if it wasn't, man, that's, that's what was engraved in my melon, you know. Because that's, that's what I thought until I found out about grace. No, I'm not going to be judged. Why? Because Jesus has already been judged. He stepped up there for us. So we don't have to be judged, okay? Proverbs, well, uh, yeah, Proverbs 19, 12. It says this. It says, the king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like the dew on the grass, okay? Now that's, the king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, okay? But now, we're not going to be judged, are we? Hmm. So who's that to, okay? Now, Let's skip the next one and go to 1 Peter 5.8. 1 Peter 5.8. It says this. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. See now, the devil is trying to copy something, isn't he? Here. The king's wrath, which, which is God, okay? The king's wrath. But now the devil's trying to walk around doing like a roaring lion, okay? He's trying to copy. He's trying to mimic something, okay? The devil goes about as a roaring like a lion. Galatians 6, 9 says this. Do I have it in there? Okay, there it is. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time at the appointed season we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Okay? So, how do, what, am I, what am I trying to say? 
you are saved. You are saved. You're not going to be judged. Don't fall back. Don't fall back and thinking that you're not, don't, don't quit your trusting God. That's how you're saved is by trusting him. Once saved, always saved. Anybody ever heard that one? It's been a big, big, big to do. Once saved, always saved. Oh, you can't be saved. You can lose your salvation. Really? Can I? How do I do that? I can't. Do I believe in once saved, always saved? Yes, I do. Absolutely do. The more you know about grace, the more you know that you are saved. You are saved. You cannot lose your salvation. It's not by what you do that loses your salvation. It's by what he did that keeps you saved. It's like the demonstration that I use of Noah in the boat. Okay? The boat is Jesus. Let's just say the boat is Jesus. And you're tucked in the boat. You are in Christ. Okay? There was only one window in the boat. And that was straight up. Why? Because he wanted, he wanted them to look up unto him. He didn't want to see, they didn't want, God didn't want them, Noah and his family, to look out and see the destruction and all the, all the negativity going on around them. He just wanted them to look up. Okay? Now, I'm sure that the, the boat got to tossing and weaving. Okay? And if they fell down in the boat, were, were they cast out? No, they're still in the boat. When you fall, when you do something stupid, are you cast out like a leper? <laughs> no. You're still in the hands of Christ. You cannot lose your salvation. I'm sorry, you cannot. Okay? But God cannot be angry to the God cannot be angry to the true believer. He can't be. The wrath of God comes only on the children of disobedience. Ephesians 5, 6. It says this. It says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience. Those are those who aren't in grace. It's what it is. Okay? Satan wants to be God and will try to deceive you. He is a master of deception, as you can see. A master of deception. Go ahead, go to the next one. He's a master of deception. Pulls a rabbit out of the hat. <laughs> Do you like my humor? <laughs> ah, we'll quit right there. <laughs> when you are weak, he is strong. When you are weak, he is strong. And he's able to work... He will give you the desires of your heart when I know I can't do it on my own and I have to trust Him to do it. God won't share His glory with you. Okay? So He's not going to go, well, you know, you've done 90% of the work and I'll do the last 10 to make it complete. No. Okay, Lord, I'll do 10% of the work and you do 90%. No. All right, Lord, I'll do 1% of the work and you do 99% of the work. No. He says, no. I don't want you in it at all. I want, just sit back and relax. Let me do it. AJ, just sit still. I'll, what do you need? You need a pop? I'll go get it. You need a sandwich? I'll go get it. Okay? Just, just sit still. You just sit. I want to serve. Jesus says, I want to serve you. you, you don't, just sit. Don't, don't, no, no, just sit. Don't get up. Let me do it. Now, see, if, if I was sitting here and you said, you know, you, you sit and relax and I'll, I'll Bev's going to get me something. No, I'll get, no, sit down. Okay. No, I'll, I, no, no. I'll go. See, I'm not relaxed. I'm not at rest. Sit back, relax, let him drive the bus. Let him drive the boat. Let him do it. And he will do it. He knows your heart. He knows the desires you have. And he will do what he says he'll do. Amen? Praise God.